שלום לכם. עונו השנה, the theme was to make the Kadosh Baruch Hu the king. That theme continues until Yom Kippur. That's a seret yemei tshuva. Making HaKadosh Baruch Hu the Melech, the king. How do you do that? Let's analyze this. Is it just by saying the words that he's the king? Or is it only a lip service saying if we don't actually do anything about it? And if you think very well, you'll see that one that wants to become a rabbi, how does he know that he is a good rabbi? How do you know that he's a successful rabbi? How do you know that his, his goal of what he's trying to achieve is being accomplished? If he sees that his students are going in his way. Students make the rabbi into the rabbi by imitating his ways. If you see that they're learning the same way that he is learning, he, he, they make him into a good rabbi. They shine his rabbinical statue. And therefore, if you see a rabbi that teaches their students, his students, the, the, his ways, and they imitate those ways, you see that that shines his rabbinical aspect. Same thing with a father. When you have a father, he really wants his children to be as much as possible like him. The more they behave like him, the more father he is, the shine of the father comes out, which means, let's say there's a father that gives a lot of charity. Once he sees his children doing the same thing, he feels proud because he sees his children are following his ways. Anything positive that a person does and his children follow his footsteps that shows that he is a model that one need to copy. And therefore, when we're dealing with a Kadosh Buhu, it's the same thing. In order to make a Kadosh Buhu the king, it's not enough just to say that he's the king again and again in that fila, but rather to imitate his ways. And that is something that a Kadosh Buhu actually commends us and Chazal explained, Mahu rachu, mafatachanu rachu, mahu chanu, nafatachanu, which means follow his ways, and then that is actually shines out the kingdom of uh, the, the Hakadosh Baruch Hu. It shines the king in Hakadosh Baruch Hu. That's something that we need to understand. How exactly is it done when Hakadosh Baruch Hu comes to Moshe Rabenu? He tells him that he should say in front of him the Yud Gimel Midot Ochamim, the 13 Midot of Mercy. And HaKadosh Baruch doesn't just say it, but he also shows him how it should be done. He puts a talit, so to speak, and he says in front of him the Yud Gimel Midot. Rashi says in Parashat Kitisa, Lule Pasuk Omro, Yi Epshar Haya Le Omro. If not for the Pasuk, if not for the Katuv, Lulea Katuv, if not for the Pasuk saying those words, nobody could have said such things because to say that a Kadosh who wears a talit and, and, and appears to Moshe Rabbeinu and teaches him those things is something that it's impossible to say. But since the Pasuk actually says, Hashem Lefanav, Hashem passed in front of him and he told him those you give me midot, then we know that that is what actually happened there. Those Yud Gimel Midot of HaKadosh Baruch Hu say Chazal that we need to imitate. It's not enough that one should say it because the way the Gemara says in Rosh Hashanah is Kshichtehu Yisrael Asu Lefanai Yud Gimel Midot Elu Vani Mochelaim which means it's not enough to say it says Asu if they do, if Am Yisrael does the Yud Gimel Midot HaKadosh Baruch Hu forgives them. What happens when a person does Yud get those Yud Gimel Midot, does Yud Gimel, those Yud Gimel Midot, shines the Malchut of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. What does it mean to do those Yud Gimel Midot? Is to imitate those Midot of HaKadosh Baruch Hu and to do the same as much as possible. And that is actually what we say, Bevehalachta Bedrachav. When HaKadosh Baruch Hu created men, it was on the sixth day of creation. And that is when we say the Mizmor of Tehilim, Hashem Malach, which means when man was created, that is when Hashem becomes the king. Because now 
it's possible for Kadosh Baruch Hu to see those that imitate his ways, and in those ways, they make him into the king in the utmost way. Now, those Yud Kim Midot are not things that are easy to imitate and easy to do and follow in Hashem's way. Rather, it's pretty hard. But at least a person needs to know what are those Midot and what is he trying to accomplish. At least he needs to know what they are before he even thinks about, think about uh, doing those things. It's, it's, it's one thing to come to a field that you don't even know what are the rules of the game, and another that you know the rules of the game, but it's hard to do. At least you can have some, uh, you, you can relate to them that eventually you can try to perfect yourself as much as possible in those things. And therefore, over here, those you give me a I actually explained in the Sefer Tomer Dvorah. Tomer Dvorah is a Sefer of the Ramak of Moshe Kordevero, which was one of the giant Mekubalim at the time of the Arizal. Actually, he had much influence on the Arizal, on Torah the Kabbalah. And Rav Chaim Vital was considered also one of his early students. Afterwards, he was a student of the Ari. But this Rav Moshe Kordevero had a tremendous influence on many, many Gdolei Israel at that generation, the, uh, the Ramami Pano also uh, was one of his students, and the Shla speaks about him very, very highly. He also has uh, the Bet Yosef, he was a student of the Bet Yosef. Bet Yosef writes about him tremendous things in his Sefer of Kat Ochel. So we're talking about a very, very big giant that lived in, in Sfat in that era. And he writes a, a Sefer about the Shivim Tmarim, Yud Bet Ma'anot, the Shivim Tmarim. The less Tamar he's dealing with is Tomer Dvora. Tomer Dvora is the last chapter of his Sefer, and that uh, Sefer Tomer Dvora, in the beginning of that, he explained those Yud Gimel Midot. And he says that we are, we should, and we are obligated to follow Hashem's ways, and when a person does as Hashem does, and he follows his way, he shines those midot in the world, and if he doesn't, they actually like fade out, and they don't have the mercy that's needed in the world in order to revive the world, in order to make the world operate and run in a merciful way. And therefore, we need to know what are those yid given midot. Each and every person should open up the Sefer Tomer Dvora and try to learn those, but it's a little bit uh, hard to understand as it is in deep concepts. And also, when we're dealing with such things, it's really something that has to do a little bit with uh, Kabbalah. But today, there's many Sfarim that's written in English with a lot of uh, explanations that's easier, much easier to understand. But let's just take a few of those Midot and try to understand them ourselves. First, we need to know that the Yudgimel Midot that we found in Parashah Kitisa that Kadosh Buhu says in front of a Kadosh Buhu, Vavor Hashem al Pana, Vikra, Hashem Hashem el Kum Hanun, El Kapayim, El Chesed, Vemet, not the Chesed, Larafim, the Savon, the Fish of Ratavaneke, are equivalent to those that we found in the Navi that says, Miel Kamoch, and the Savon, Vavor al Pesha, and so on. The Yudgimel Midot correspond one to the other. And therefore, when we take the first Midah, Mi El Kamocha, who is a God like you, says the Ramak, what does that mean? It means that a Kadosh who is a Melech Ne'ilav, Le Melech Olev, an insulted king. A Kadosh who is being insulted and he holds his insult. He lets let that happen. And he expects us to do the same thing. How is he insulted? The Ramak explains over here something fascinating. A Kadosh Buhu actually is the one that revives the world every second, as we all know. The world that just in, does, does, doesn't just run by the creation first uh, being created and then it runs uh, manually or, or automatically, rather, automatically without a Kadosh Buhu giving it life every second. That's not the way it is. Rather, as we say, Kadosh Buhu has to revive it, give it oxygen, give it life, and let things operate every every moment, every single moment. And this idea is uh, is brought down in Nefesh Achaim. We see that 
in, uh, in, in the tefillah that we say mechadesh betuvo b'chol yom ha'aseh b'rashit every day, every moment that Kadosh Baruch Hu, uh, renews the world and therefore everything in the world is being renewed every second by HaKadosh Baruch Hu, in, including a person that is ready to sin. He's at that moment that he sins, who gives him life, who gives him the, 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 the energy, who gives him oxygen to breathe in order to be able to operate and, uh, and sin? It's HaKadosh Baruch Hu himself. At that very moment that a person goes to sin, it's, it's a great insult to HaKadosh Baruch Hu because HaKadosh Baruch Hu said not to do that sin. And that person goes ahead and uses the powers that HaKadosh Baruch Hu gives him at that very moment, he uses the energy that HaKadosh Baruch Hu gives him that very moment, he uses the limbs that HaKadosh Baruch Hu operates that very moment, his eyes that HaKadosh Baruch Hu makes him see, his mouth that HaKadosh Baruch Hu makes him speak, his every limb and every sense, and with that he uses to sin and do something that against the will of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Now that's something that's mind-boggling, but it's even more than that, because HaKadosh Baruch Hu, not only that he allows it to happen, but he himself helps him do it, because if not that HaKadosh Baruch Hu would help him do it, he wouldn't be able to do it. It's HaKadosh Baruch Hu that actually, actually behind the scene helps him do every single scene that he does. In other words, it's so to speak, the person holds a Kadosh Baruch Hu and as, as, as a hostage and goes and does something against what a Kadosh Baruch Hu wants. And that's something that's mind-boggling. Imagine a person that would hold somebody else's hand, let's say he would take his father's hand, and his father is very weak, and with that he would just punch his father. He uses his power. But even worse than that, let's say that the father gives him that very moment energy, which means the son is very weak, he can't move, and the father needs to give him energy. Let's say he gives him an IV at that moment, and he's the one that feeds him that IV, and that very moment that he gives him the IV, the son takes his hand and punches the father. The father could stop the IV at any moment, and he doesn't. He just wants his son to live, and he allows him, so to speak, to punch the father with the hand that the father at that very moment, at that very moment, uh, gives him the life and oxygen and, 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 and energy. That is something that's very, very insulting to the father. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu gets that insult and, 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 and is willing to swallow it, so to speak, and let it go and continues the person energy in order for him to do whatever he's doing. Imagine a person that uh, was invited to somebody's house, he didn't have a place to be, he needs a place for a week just to stay until he finds a place to live. And that person promises he'll get, he'll come to the host house and he'll keep everything clean and he'll take care of him, everything, he's not, gonna use, he's not gonna use anything in the house, he'll be a good guest. But as soon as he comes to the house, he starts breaking things and he starts uh, throwing things around. He makes the place very dirty and very messy. Everything becomes over there a big mess. And, uh, and, and, and is very, the, the place was just renovated and he's he just not careful and he breaks things on the right and on the left. He comes also, he brings his friends and the place slowly, slowly becomes a wreck. The host normally would tell him to leave because he's using his facilities, he's using his place, he's using his house, and he's using his own things within the house to break the house. He opens the fridge and he takes food from the, from the, from the host, and he opens up the food and he, he just throws the wraps, the wrappers around, and he dirties uh, with the food, the, the carpet, and the floor, and the tables, and the walls, and he just parties around the house. The, the, the host should throw him out. You, you, but over here, if he lets him stay and use his own things around the house, his own food, his own furniture, and those very things that he uses, he, with those things he breaks his house, that's something that's, that's very, very insulting 
to the to the to the host and the guest just keeps on doing it and if the host lets him stay and lets him get away with it and doesn't kick him out and provides him the things that he needs in order for him to have a good stay that is exactly the midah me el kamocha who's a god like you when a person does such a thing although it's extremely hard says the ramak that he shines in the world the midah of me el kamocha that gives all the mercy in the world all the good in the world he's just one of those that help Akadosh Baruch Hu, so to speak, he helps the Midah shine in this world. And in that, he, he actually imitates Hakadosh Baruch Hu and he becomes and he makes Hakadosh Baruch Hu into the king, Melech. That is how you make Hakadosh Baruch Hu Melech by imitating the Midot of Hakadosh Baruch Hu. That shows that Hakadosh Baruch Hu is the king because we are imitating, we want to be like Hakadosh Baruch Hu. The next thing is Miel Kamocho Nose Avon. Nosei Avon means he carries the sin. What does that mean? Says the Ramak, that whenever a person sins, he creates with, with that sin, mazikim. Angels that damage around the world. They, 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 they cause a lot of harm in the world. They destructive uh, bad angels called the mazikim. But even the mazikim can't can't exist if HaKadosh Baruch Hu doesn't give them life. HaKadosh Baruch Hu gives life not only to physical things, but also spiritual things. What are the spiritual things HaKadosh Baruch Hu gives life to? Anything physical, anything spiritual, including those mazikim. Which means, when a person sins, he creates those mazikim, those bad angels, those harming angels, and HaKadosh Baruch Hu needs to revive them and give them life in order for them to exist. Normally, says Ramosh Kodevero, those Masikim should go back and harm the person that caused them to, uh, to be created. He's the one that sinned. Because HaKadosh Baruch Hu doesn't have to revive them. They, they, who has to give them life? The person that created them. So HaKadosh Baruch Hu should have told them, go back to the person that created you. And they go back and they are revived, so to speak. They have to feed, they have to eat in order to live from, the, from, the, from that person that sinned. How do they actually get their life? By harming that person. When they harm that person, they get their life. And therefore, when they do that, they, they cause him all kind of isurim, suffering, and eventually they can kill him in order for them to be able to live. He is the one that created them. HaKadosh Buch, on the other hand, doesn't send them back to the person in order to cause him the suffering and even worse than that, but rather Kadosh Buhu himself revives those people, he gives them life, and he so to speak feeds them, obviously you're talking about spiritual feeding, in order for them to keep on existing. Because this is the way Kadosh Buhu created the world. When your person sins, he creates those things, and Kadosh Buhu revives them every second, he gives them life in order for them to exist. Until, says the remark, until the person does teshuvah, and with his teshuvah and his surim, eventually they are wiped out, or they claim from him what needs to be claimed in the next world, or in this world, the Kadosh Baruch Hu would claim it slowly, slowly. But this is a great midah of chesed, of rachamim, says the Ramak, from the first midah, because now a Kadosh Baruch Hu also has to take care of those things. I was saying, let's imagine that those guests that came into the house and uh, and stayed over there. Meanwhile, this guest got uh, some friends that are from the mafia. The mafia and the bad people, the gangsters. And now, eventually, they turn against them, against, uh, against the, uh, the, the guest. And they want from him all kind of... Uh, they want money. They want, they want him to give them what they call protection money. They want protection money. And they come to him and they say, if you're not going to give us money, we're going to kill you. We're going to wipe you out. We're going to uh, make you disappear. And eventually he runs out of money. He doesn't have money. And the host knows that if he doesn't help him out, this person is going to be very, uh, very badly um, hurt. 
So what does he do? He himself gives those gangsters money in order to save his guest. Imagine such a thing. The guest came in. He's behaving as, as, as wild as he is. He's making the wrong friends. And eventually those friends turn against him. And now the, the, get, the host has to constantly feed those, uh, those gangsters. He has to give them money in order to protect his guests. That is what HaKadosh Baruch does in the Midah of Nosei Avon. Miel Kamocha Nosei Avon carries the sin result, the bad angels that were created by the sinner. See the next Midah. Miel Kamocha Nosei Avon Ve'ober Al Pesha. What does mean Ve'ober Al Pesha? HaKadosh Baruch not only that he carries those things, but he also cleans the damage. Let's say, imagine that this, uh, this guest at the end of his stay it's been a week and he racked the house he damaged the house he made a mess everything you need only not only cleaning work over here in construction as well you need people to come and renew the house that was just that was just uh, that was just uh, renewed beforehand it was uh, it, it, it's a total rack and damage around here so normally you would tell the uh, guest that's leaving, look, it's your job, you made a mess over here, you told me you're going to leave the house the way you received it, please make sure that you are uh, cleaning and you are fixing everything that was damaged. Instead of that, a Kadosh Baruch Hu, with the damage that the sin have made, a Kadosh Baruch Hu is the one that goes and cleans that very mess. All the wreck that a person does with his sins, HaKadosh Baruch himself goes to clean. And that is the Midah of Ve'over Al Pesha. HaKadosh Baruch cleans that sin and makes sure that everything is as new as it was before. This is how the Midot go one by one. Maybe we continue learning them, but I wanted to give a taste and flavor of what those Yudkim El Midot are really like. It's fascinating to learn that Sefer Tomer Dvorah and understand those. And when a person understands them slowly, slowly can maybe relate a little bit to them. And with that, he's making HaKadosh Baruch Hu a king, not only with lip service that's saying HaMelech and so, so on, not only saying the Yud Gimel, Midot, Rachamim, that we say throughout the Aseret Yemei Tshuvah and mainly on Yom Kippur, but also he starts relating to them in a way that maybe he can start doing some of those things and really elevating a Kadosh Baruch Hu as a king.